Quiet by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Cornel Nemesh, Reno, Nevada A log hut in the solitude A clapboard roof to rest beneath This side, the shadow-haunted wood That side, the sunlight-haunted heath a daybreak morn will come to me in raiment of the wide wind spun. Slim in her rosy hand the key that opens the gateway of the sun. Her smile will help my heart enough with love to labor all the day. And cheer the road whose rocks are rough with her smooth footprints each array. A dusk a voice will call afar, a lone voice like the weepoor wills, and on her shimmering brow one star, night will descend the western hills. She at my door till dawn will stand, with gothic eyes that, dark and deep, are mirrors of a mystic land fantastic with the towns of sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain music by madison kawine read for librivox.org by bruce Gachuk. Thou, O oh thou, thou of the corded shell and golden plectrum, thou of the dark eyes and pale pacific brow, music, who by the plangent waves, or in the echoing night of labyrinthine caves, or on God's mountains, lonely as the stars, touchest reverberant bars of immemorial sorrow and amaze keeping regret and memory awake and all the immortal ache of love that leans upon the past sweet days in retrospection now oh now interpreter and heart physician thou who gazest on the heaven and the hell of life and singest each as well touch with thy all mellifluous fingertips or thy melodious lips this sickness named my soul making it whole as is an echo of a chord or some symphonic word or sweet vibrating sigh that deep resurgent still doth rise and die on thy voluminous roll part of the beauty and the mystery that axles earth with music as a slave swinging it round and round on each sonorous pole mid spheric harmony and choral majesty and diapasoning of wind and wave speeding it on its far elliptic way mid vasty anthemings of night and day o cosmic cry of two eternities wherein we see the phantasms death and life at endless strife above the silence of a monster grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain a dream shape by madison kawine Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. With moon-white hearts that held a gleam, I gathered wildflowers in a dream, And shaped a woman whose sweet blood Was odor of the wildwood bud. From dew the starlight arrowed through, I wrought a woman's eyes of blue, The lids that on her eyeballs lay, where rose pale petals of the may out of a rosebud's veins i drew the fragrant crimson beating through the languid lips of her 
whose kiss was as a poppy's drowsiness out of the moonlight and the air i wrought the glory of her hair that o'er her eyes blue heaven lay like some gold cloud or dawn of day i took the music of the breeze and water whispering in the trees and shaped the soul that breathed below a woman's blossom breasts of snow a shadow's shadow in the glass of sleep my spirit saw her pass and thinking of it now meseems we only live within our dreams for in that time she was to me more real than our reality more real than earth more real than i the unreal things that pass and die end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old barn by madison cowine read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk lo swallow swept and gray between the orchard and the spring all its wide windows overflowing hay and crannied doors a swing the old barn stands to-day deep in its hay the leghorn hides a round white nest and humming soft on roof and rafter o'er its long rude sides black in the sun-shot loft the building hornet glides along its corn-crib cautiously as thieving fingers skulks the rat or in warped stalls of fragrant timothy gnaws at some loosened slat or passes shadowy a dream of drought made audible before its door hot harsh and shrill all day the locust sings what other spell shall hold it lazier still than the long days now tell dusk and the cricket and the strain of tree toad and of frog and stars that burn above the rich west's ribbed stain and dropping pasture bars and cowbells up the lane night and the moon and katy did and leaf lisp of the wind-touched boughs and mazy shadows that the fireflies thrid and sweet breath of the cows and the lone owl here hid End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wood Witch by Madison Kawine. Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew D. Robinson. There is a woodland witch who lies with bloom bright limbs and beam bright eyes among the water flags that rank the slow brook's heron haunted bank the dragonflies in brass and blue are signs she works her sorcery through weird wizard characters she weaves her spells with under forest leaves these wait her word like imps upon the gray flag pods their wings of lawn and gauze their bodies gleaming green while o'er the wet sand left between the running water and the still in pansy hues and daffodil the fancies that she doth devise assume the forms of butterflies rich colored and tis she you hear whose sleepy rune hummed in the ear of silence bees and beetles purr and the dry droning locusts whirr till where the wood is very lone vague monotone meets monotone and slumber is begot and born a fairy child beneath the thorn there is no mortal who may scorn the witchery she spreads around her dim domain wherein is bound the beauty of abandoned time as some sweet thought twixt rhyme and rhyme 
and through her spells you shall behold the blue turn gray, the gray turn gold of hollow heaven, and the brown of twilight vistas twinkled down with fireflies, and in the gloom feel the cool vowels of perfume slow syllabled of weed and bloom. But in the night, at languid rest, when like a spirit's naked breast the moon slips from a silver mist, with star-bound brow and star-wreathed wrist, if you should see her rise and wave you welcome, ah, what thing could save you then, forevermore her slave? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. May by Madison Carwine Read for LibriVox.org The golden disks of the rattlesnake weed That spangle the woods and dance No gleam of gold that the twilights hold Is strong as their necromance For under the oaks where the wood paths lead, the golden disks of the rattlesnake weed are the May's own utterance. The azure stars of the bluet bloom that sprinkle the woodland's trance. No blink of blue that a cloud lets through is sweet as their countenance. For over the knolls that the woods perfume the azure stars of the bluet bloom are the light of the May's own glance. With her wondering words and her looks she comes in a sunbeam of a gown. She needs but think and the blossoms wink, but look and they shower down. By orchard ways where the wild bee hums, with her wondering words and her looks she comes like a little maid to town. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain by Madison Carwine Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Around the stillness deepened then the grain Went wild with wind And every briery lane Was swept with dust And then tempestuous black Hillward the tempest heaved the monster back That on the thunder leaned as on a cane And on huge shoulders Bore a cloudy pack That gold gold from many a lightning crack, one great drop splashed and wrinkled down the pane, and then field, hill, and wood were lost in rain. At last through clouds, as from a cavern hewn, into night's heart the sun burst, angry room, and every cedar with its weight of wet Against the sunset's fury, splendor set, Starkled to beauty, seamed with rubies strewn, Then in drenched gardens, like sweet phantoms met, Dim odors rose of pink and minuet, And in the east, a confidence that soon Grew to the calm assurance of the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fall by Madison Cowing. Read for LibriVox.org by the letter A. Sad hearted spirit of the solitudes, who comest through the ruin wedded woods, grey gowned in fog. Gold girdled with the gloom of tawny sunsets, Burdened with perfume of rain-wet uplands, Chilly with the mist. 
and all the beauty of the fire kissed cold forests crimsoning thy indolent way odorous of death and drowsy with decay i think of thee as seated midst the showers of languid leaves that cover up the flowers the little flower sisterhoods whom june once gave wild sweetness to as to a tune a singer gives her soul's wild melody watching the squirrel store his granary or mid old orchards i have pictured thee thy hair's profusion blown about thy back one lovely shoulder bathed with gypsy black upon thy palm one nestling cheek and sweet the rosy russets tumbled at thy feet was it a voice lamenting for the flowers or heart-sick bird that sang of happier hours a cricket dirging days that soon must die or did the ghost of summer wander by end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sunset in Autumn by Madison Cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Sunset in Autumn Blood-coloured oaks that stand against a sky of gold and brass Gaunt slopes on which the bleak leaves glow of briar and sassafras And broom sedge strips of smoky pink and pearl-grey clumps of grass In which, beneath the ragged sky, the rain pools gleam like glass from west to east from wood to wood along the forest side the winds the sowers of the lord with thunderous footsteps stride their stormy hands rain acorns down and mad leaves wildly died like tatters of their rushing cloaks stream round them far and wide the frail leaf cricket in the weeds sounds its far fairy bell and like a torch of phantom ray the milkweed's windy shell glimmers while wrapped in withered dreams the wet autumnal smell of loam and leaf like fall's own ghost steals over field and dell the oaks against the copper sky o'er which like some black lake of dis bronze clouds like surges fringed with sullen fire break loom sombre as doom's citadel above the veils that make a pathway to a land of mist the moon's pale feet shall take now dyed with burning carbuncle a limbo litten pane red in wild walls of storm the west opens to hill and plain on which the wild geese ink themselves a far triangle train and then the shuddering clouds close down and night it comes again end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Content by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. When I behold how some pursue fame that is care's embodiment, or fortune whose false face looks true, an humble home with sweet content is all I ask for me and you an humble home where pigeons coo whose path leads under breezy lines of frosty buried cedars to a gate one mass of trumpet vines is all i ask for me and you a garden which all summer through the roses old make redolent and morning glories gay of hue and tansy with its homely scent is all i ask for me and you an orchard that the pippins strew from whose bruised gold the juices spring a vineyard where the grapes hang blue, wine big and ripe for the vintaging, is all I ask for me and you. A lane that leads to some far view of forest or a fallow land, bloomed o'er of rose and meadow rue, each with a bee in its hot hand, is all I ask for me and you. At morn, a pathway deep with dew, and birds that vary time and tune, at eve, a sunset avenue, and whippoorwills that haunt the moon is all i ask for me and you dear heart with wants so small and few and faith that's better far than gold 
a lowly friend, a child or two, to care for us when we are old, is all I ask for me and you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. October. Long hosts of sunlight and the bright wind blows a tourney trumpet on the listed hill. Past is the splendor of the royal rose and duchess daffodil crowned queen of beauty in the garden space strong daughter of a bitter race and bold a ragged beggar with a lovely face reigns the sad marigold and i who saw june's butterfly for days now find it like a coreopsis bloom amber and seal rain murdered neath the blaze of this sunflower's plume here drones the bee and there sky voyaging wings there the blue gulfs of heaven the last song the red bird flings me as a dew still rings upon that pear tree's prong no angry sunset brims with rubier red the bowl of heaven than the days indeed pour in the blossoms of this salvia bed where each leaf seems to bleed and where the wood net stands a little mist above the efforts of the weedy stream the girl october tired of the tryst dreams a diviner dream one foot just dipping the caressing wave one knee at languid angle locks that drown hands nut stained hazel-eyed she lies and grave watching the leaves drift down end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Discovery by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Discovery. What is it now that I shall seek where woods dip downward in the hills, a mossy nook, a ferny creek, and may among the daffodils? or in the valley's vistad glow past rocks of terrace trumpet vines shall i behold her coming slow sweet may among the columbines with red bud cheeks and bluet eyes big eyes the homes of happiness to meet me with the old surprise her hoyden hair all bonnetless who waits for me when note for note the birds make glad the forest trees a dogwood blossom at her throat my may among the anemones as sweetheart breezes kiss the blooms and dewdrops drink the moon's bright beams my soul shall kiss her lips perfumes and drain the magic of her dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Old Spring by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Old Spring. Under rocks where on the rose like a strip of morning glows, where the azure throated newt drowses on the twisted root, and the brown bees humming homeward stop to suck the honeydew, fern and leaf hid, gleaming gloamward, drips the wildwood spring I knew drips the spring my boyhood knew myrrh and music everywhere haunt its cascades like the hair that a naiad tosses cool swimming strangely beautiful with white fragrance for her bosom and her mouth a breath of song under leaf and branch and blossom flows the woodland spring along sparkling singing flows along still the wet one morning's touch its gray rocks perhaps and such slender stars as dusk may have pierce the rose that roofs its wave still the thrush may call at noontide and the whippoorwill at night nevermore by sun or moontide shall i see it gliding white falling flowing wild and white 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Forest Spring by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Forest Spring. Push back the brambles, berry blue. The hollowed spring is full in view. Deep tangled with luxuriant fern, ripples its rock embedded urn. Not for the loneliness that keeps the coin wherein its crystal sleeps, not for wild butterflies that sway their pansy pinions all the day above its mirror, nor the bee, nor dragonfly that passing see themselves reflected in its spar, not for the one white liquid star that twinkles in its firmament nor moonshot clouds so slowly sent athwart it when the kindly night beats its long grasses with the light small jewels of the dimpled dew not for the day's inverted blue nor the quaint dimly coloured stones that dance within it where it moans not for all these i love to sit in silence and to gaze in it but lo a nymph with merry eyes greets mine within its laughing skies a glimmering shimmering nymph who plays all the long fragrant summer days with instant sights of bees and birds and talks with them in water words and for whose nakedness the air weaves moony mists and on whose hair unfilleted the night will set that lone star as a coronet end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hills by Madison Cowain, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Hills. There is no joy of earth that thrills my bosom like the far-off hills, the unchanging hills that shadowy beckon our mutability to follow and to gaze upon foundations of the dusk and dawn. Meseems the very heavens are massed upon their shoulders vague and vast with all the skyey burden of the winds and clouds and stars above lo how they sit before us seeing the laws that give all beauty being behold to them when dawn draws near the nomads of the air appear unfolding crimson camps of day in brilliant bands then march away and under burning battlements of evening plant their tinted tents the truth of olden myths that brood by haunted stream and haunted wood they see and feel the happiness of old at which we only guess the dreams the ancients loved and knew still as their rocks and trees are true not otherwise than presences the tempest and the calm to these one shouting on them all the night black-limbed and veined with lambent light the other with the ministry of all soft things that company with music whose embodied form fills all the solitude with charm of leaves and waters and the peace of bird-begotten melodies and who at night does still confer with the mild moon that telleth her pale tale of lonely love until wan shadows of her passion fill the heights with shapes that glimmer by clad on with sleep and memory end of poem this recording is in the public domain the song of the thrush by madison cowain Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Song of the Thrush. Overhead, overhead, a wood thrush flutes, and it seems to me all the sweet words in the world, married to melody, could not express what its few wild notes inspired, and simple and free express, say to me of expectation and woodland mystery dreams and wonder visions never appearing remote and unattainably beautiful o oh, indescribable song song of the wild brown thrush o oh, june o oh, love o oh, youth of you of you it speaks to me 
of the lost the irremediable the indescribably fair and far and yet to be found the mysteriously hidden too the lure of the indiscoverable calling calling bidding me on and on in the voice of all my longings down the dim the deep the cadenced aisles of the forest end of poem this recording is in the public domain transmutation by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson to me all beauty that i see is melody made visible an earth translated state may be of music heard in heaven or hell out of some love and passion strain of saints the rose evolved its bloom and dreaming of it here again perhaps relives it as perfume out of some chant that demons sing of hate and pain the sunset grew and haply still remembering relives it here as some wild hue End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Frost by Madison Cawain. Read for LibriVox.org by Cornel Nemesh, Reno, Nevada. Magician he who autumn nights down from the starry darkness whirls heaven's harlequin whose spangled tights and wand are powder thick with pearls through him each pain presents a scene a lilliputian landscape where the world is white instead of green and trees and houses hang in air where elfins gamble in the light and bow the jeweled bells of flowers where upside down we see the night with many moons and meteor showers and surely in his wand and hand lies Mida's magic for behold some morn we wake and find the land both field and forest turn to gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain adventurous by madison cowain read for LibriVox.org by sonia adventurous seemingly over the hilltops possibly under the hills a tireless wing that never drops and a song that never stills epics heard on the star slips lyrics read in the dew to sing the song at our fingertips and live the world anew cavaliers of the cortez kind bold and free and strong and oh for a fine and muscular mind to sing a new world's song sailing seas of the silver morn blown of its balm and spice to put the old world art to scorn at the price of any price danger death but the hope high gods though the purpose fail into the deeds of a vaster sky sailing a dauntless sail end of poem this recording is in the public domain Invocation by Madison Cowine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O life, O death, O God, have we not striven? Have we not known thee, God, as thy stars know heaven? Have we not held thee true, true as thy deepest sweet and immaculate blue heaven whence reigns thy dew? Have we not known thee true, O God, who keepest? O God, our Father God, who gave us to fire, to rise above the sod, to soar, aspire. What though we strive and strive, and all our souls say live? Will not the scorn of men, like some wild bird again, falcon it down with sneers, as often in past years? 
and o sun centred high thou too who art poet beneath thy seeing sky each day new keats's die crying why should we try that which we seek's a lie why is this so oh why thou who dost know it we know thee beautiful we know thee bitter help thou men's eyes are dull o god most beautiful make thou their souls less full of things mere glitter dost thou not see our tears dost thou not hear the years treading our hearts to shards o lord of all lords give heed o god of hosts there mid thy glorious ghosts most high and holy have mercy on our tears have mercy on our years our strivings and our fears o lord of lordly peers on us so lowly on us so fondly fain to tell what mother pain of nature haunts the rain on us so glad to show what sorrow wings the snow and her wild winds that blow us who interpret right her mystic rose of light her moony rune of night us who have utterance for each warm flame-hearted star that stammers from afar who hears the tears and sighs of every bud that dies while heaven's dew on it lies who see the power that dowers the wildwood bosks and bowers with musk and sap of flowers who see what no man sees in water earth and breeze and in the hearts of trees turn not away thy light o god our strength is slight help us who breast the height have mercy infinite have mercy in the poem this recording is in the public domain the death of love by madison cowine read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson so love is dead the love we knew of old and in the sorrow of our hearts hushed halls a lute lies broken and a rose flower falls love's house stands empty and his hearth lies cold lone in dim places where sweet vows were told in walks grown desolate by ruined walls beauty decays and on their pedestals dreams crumble and the immortal gods are mold music is slain or sleeps one voice alone one voice awakens and like a wandering ghost haunts all the echoing chambers of the past the voice of memory that stills to stone the soul that hears the mind that utterly lost before its beautiful presence stands aghast end of poem this recording is in the public domain unanswered by madison cowain read for librivox dot org by cornel nemesh reno nevada how long ago it is since we went a maying since she and i went maying long ago the years have left my forehead lined i know have seen my hair around the temple's graying ah time will change us yeah i hear it saying she too grows old the face of rose and snow has lost its freshness in the hairs brown glow some strands of silver sadly to our strain the form you knew whose beauty so enspelled has lost 
the lightness of its loveliness, and all the gladness that her blue eyes have tears, and the world have hardened with distress. True, true, I answer, O oh, ye years that part, these things are changed, but is her heart, her heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love, the Interpreter, by Madison Cawain, read for LibriVox.org, by Cornel Nemesh in Reno, Nevada. Thou art the music that I hear in sleep, the poetry that lures me on in dreams. The magic, thou, that holds my thought with themes of young romance, in reverie's mystic keep, the lily's aura, and the damask deep that clothes the rose, the whispering soul that seems to haunt the wind. The rainbow light that streams like some wild spirit towards the cataract's leap are glimmerings of thee and thy loveliness pervading all my world, interpreting the marvel and the wonder this disclose for lacking thee. To me were meaningless life, love, and hope, the joy of everything, and all the beauty that the wide world knows. End of poem. The recording is in the public domain. Love Despised by Madison Carwain Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Love Despised Why not resolve and hunt it from one's heart, This love, this god and fiend, That makes a hell of all one's life, In ways no tongue can tell, No mind divine, nor any word impart? Would not one think the slights that make hearts smart, The eyes of love's disdain, the wintry well of love's disfavor otherwise would quell, or school one's nature, too, to its own art. Why will men cringe and cry forever here for that which, once obtained, may prove a curse? Why not remember that, however fair, decay is wed to beauty, that each year robs somewhat from the riches of her purse, until at last, her house of pride stands bare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pearls by Madison Cowain. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Pearls. Baroque but beautiful. Between the loons, the valves of nacre of a mussel shell. Behold, a pearl, shaped like the burnished bell of some strange blossom that long afternoons of summer coax to open. All the moons chased luster in it, hues that only dwell with purity. It takes me, like a spell, back to a day when, whistling truant tunes, a barefoot boy I waded mid the rocks, Searching for shells strewn in the creek's slow swirl, Unconscious of the pearls that round me lay, While, mid wild roses, 
all her tomboy locks blond blowing stood unnoticed then a girl my sweetheart once the pearl i flung away end of poem this recording is in the public domain the woman speaks by madison carwine read for librivox dot org why have you come to see me in my shame a thing to spit upon despise and scorn you you who ask me you by whom was torn then cast aside like some vile rag my name what shelter could you give me now that blame and loathing would not share that wolves of vice would not besiege with eyes of glaring ice wherein sin sat not with her face of flame you love me god if yours be love for lust hell must invent another synonym if yours be love then whoredom is the way to heaven and god and not with soul but dust must burn the faces of the cherubim o beast of beasts if yours be love i say end of poem this recording is in the public domain of the slums by madison kaywin read for librafox dot org by kathleen red faced as old carousel and with eyes a hard hot blue her hair a frowsy flame bold dowdy bosomed from her window frame she leans her mouth all insult and all lies or slatter and slippered and in sluttish gown with ribald mirth and words too vile to name a new doll tear-sheet glorying in her shame armed with her false staff now she takes the town the flaring lights of alleyway saloons the reek of hideous gutters and black oaths of drunkenness from vice-infested dens are to her senses what the silvery moon's chaste splendor is and what the blossoming growths of earth and bird song are to innocence end of poem this recording is in the public domain light and wind by madison kaywin read for LibriVox .org by kathleen where through the myriad leaves of many trees the daylight falls beryl and chrysophase the glamour and the glimmer of its rays seem visible music tangible melodies light that is music music that one sees wagnerian music where forever sways the spirit of romance and gods and fays take form clad on with dreams and mysteries and now the winds transmuting necromance touches the light and makes it fall and rise vocal a harp of multitudinous waves that speaks as ocean speaks an utterance of far-off whispers mermaid murmuring sighs pelagian vast deep down in coral waves end of poem this recording is in the public domain the winds by madison k win read for librivox dot org by kathleen those hewers of the clouds the winds that lair at the four compass points are out to-night i hear their sandals trample on the height i hear their voices trumpet through the air builders of storm god's workmen now they bear up the steep stair of sky on backs of might huge tempest bulks while sweat that blinds their sight the rain is shaken from tumultuous hair now sweepers of the firmament they broom like gathered dust 
the rolling mists along heaven's floors of sapphire all the beautiful blue of skyey corridor and airy room preparing with large laughter and loud song for the white moon and stars to wander through end of poem this recording is in the public domain touches by madison kaywin read for librivox dot org by kathleen in heavens of rivered blue that sunset dies with galoshes flame deep in the west the day stands midas like or waiting on his way touches with splendor all the twilight skies each cloud that like a stepping stone he tries with rosy foot transforms its sober gray to blazing gold while ray on crystal ray within his wake the stars like bubbles rise so should the artist in his work accord all things with beauty and communicate his soul's high magic and divinity to all he does and hoping no reward toil onward making darkness aureate with light of worlds that be and are to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain earth and moon by madison kaywin read for librivox dot org by kathleen i saw the day like some great monarch die gold couched behind the clouds rich tapestries then purple sandaled clothed in silences of sleep through nails of skyey lazuli the twilight like a morning queen trailed by dim paged of dreams and shadowy mysteries and now the night the star-robed child of these in meditative loveliness draws nigh earth like to romeo deep in dew and scent beneath heaven's window watching till a light like some white blossom in its square beset lifts a faint face unto the firmament that with the moon grows gradually bright bidding him climb and clasp his juliet end of poem this recording is in the public domain dusk by madison kaywin read for librivox dot org by kathleen corn-colored clouds upon a sky of gold and mid their sheaves where like a daisy bloom left by the reapers to the gathering gloom the star of twilight flames as ruth tis told dreamed homesick mid the harvest fields of old the dusk goes gleaning color and perfume from bible slopes of heaven that illume her pensive beauty deep in shadows stoled hushed is the forest and blue vale and hill are still save for the brooklet sleepily stumbling the stone with one foam fluttering foot save for the note of one far whippoorwill and in my heart her name like some sweet bee within a rose blowing a fairy flute end of poem this recording is in the public domain september by madison kaywin read for librivox dot org by kathleen the bubbled blue of morning glory spires balloon blown foam of moon flowers and sweet snows of clematis through which september goes song-hearted rich in realized desires are flanked with hotter hues with tawny fires of acrid marigolds that light long rows of lamps and salvias red as day's red clothes that torches seem by which the month attires barbaric beauty like some asian queen towering imperial in her twofold crown of harvest and of vintage all her form gold and majestic purple in her mien the might of motherhood her baby brown abundance high on one exultant arm end of poem this recording is in the public domain the end of summer by madison kaywin read for labor fox dot org by kathleen pods are the poppies 
and slim spires of pods the hollyhocks the balsam's pearly breeds of rose-stained snow are little sacks of seeds collapsing at a touch the loat that sods the pond with green has changed its flowers to rods and discs of vesicles and all the weeds around the sleepy water and its reeds are one white smoke of seeded silk that nods summer is dead ay me sweet summer's dead the sunset clouds have built her funeral pyre through which e'en now runs subterranean fire while from the east as from a garden bed mist vined the dusk lifts her broad moon like some great golden melon saying fall has come end of poem this recording is in the public domain the passing glory by madison Kaywin. read for librivox dot org by kathleen slow sinks the sun a great carbuncle ball red in the cavern of a sombre cloud and in her garden where the dense weeds crowd among her dying asters stands the fall like some lone woman in a ruined hall dreaming of desolation and the shroud or through decaying woodlands goes down bowed hugging the tatters of her gypsy shawl the gaunt wind rises like an angry hand and sweeps the sprawling spider from its web smites frantic music in the twilight's ear and all around like melancholy sand rains dead leaves down wild leaves that mark the ebb in earth's dark hour-glass of another year end of poem this recording is in the public domain Prototypes by Madison Kaywin, read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. Whether it be that we in letters trace the pure extractness of a wood bird's strain and name it song, or with the brush attain the highest perfection of a wild flower's face, or mould in difficult marble all the grace we know as man, or from the wind and rain catch elemental rapture of refrain and mark in music to due time and place the aim of art is nature to unfold her truth and beauty to the souls of men in close suggestions in whose forms is cast nothing so new but tis long eons old nothing so old but tis as young as when the mind conceived it in the ages past End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Superstition by Madison K. Wynn. Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. In the waste places, in the sinister night, when the wood whispers like a wandering mind, and silence sits and listens to the wind, or, mid the rocks, to some wild torrent's flight, bat-browed thou waitest with thy wisp of light among black pools the moon can never find or owlet eyed thou hootest to the blind deep darkness from some cave or haunted height he who beholds but once thy fearsome face never again shall walk alone but wan and terrible attendants shall be his unutterable things that have no place in god or beauty that compel him on against all hope where endless horror is end of poem this recording is in the public domain a d nineteen hundred by madison carwine read for librivox dot org war and disaster famine and pestilence vaunt couriers of the century that comes behold them shaking their tremendous plumes above the world lo all the air grows dense with rumors of destruction and a sense cadaverous of corpses and of tombs predestined 
while, like monsters in the glooms, bristling with battle, shadowy and immense, the nations rise in dread apocalypse, where now the boast earth makes of civilization, its brag of Christianity. In vain we seek to see them in the wild eclipse of hell and horror, and the devastation of death triumphant on his hills of slain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Uncalled by Madison Cawine, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As one who, journeying westward with the sun, beholds at length from the uptowering hills, far off a land unspeakable beauty fills, Circean peaks and vales of Avalon, and sinking weary watches one by one the big seas beat between, and knows its skills no more to try that now as heaven wills this is the helpless end that all is done so tis with him whom long a vision led in quest of beauty and who finds at last she lies beyond his effort all the waves of all the world between them while the dead the myriad dead who populate the past with failure hail him from forgotten graves in the poem this recording is in the public domain. Quatrains by Madison Kywine Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Moths and Fireflies Since Fancy taught me in her school of spells, I know her tricks. These are not moths at all, nor fireflies, but masking elfland bells whose link boys torch them to Titania's ball. Autumn Wildflowers Like colored lanterns swung in elfin towers, wild morning glories light the tangled ways, and like the rosy rockets of the fays burns the sloped crimson of the cardinal flowers. The Wind in the Pines When winds go on organing through the pines on hill and headland, darkly gleaming, Meseems I hear sonorous lines of Iliads, and the woods are dreaming. Opportunity Behold a hag, whom life denies a kiss, as he rides questward in night-errant wise. Only when he hath passed her is it his to know, too late, the fairy in disguise. Dreams They mock the present, and they haunt the past. And in the future there is not a gleam with hope the soul desires that at last the heart pursuing does not find a dream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Afterward by Madison Cowine. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. What vague traditions do the golden eaves? What legends do the dawns inscribe in fire on heaven's azure leaves, the red sun colophons? What ancient stories do the waters verse? What tales of war and love do winds within the earth's vast house rehearse? God's stars stand guard above. Would I could know them as they are expressed in hue and melody, and say in words the beauties they suggest, language their mystery and in one song magnificently rise the music of the spheres, that more than marble should immortalize my name in after years. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of poems by Madison Cowine, Volume 3.